next speaker is from Cooperative Energy Futures. Please give a warm welcome to Timothy Den Herder Thomas. Hey everyone, um, I'm Timothy Denner Thomas. Uh, I'm gonna be talking to you about energy. And I was invited to talk today uh, because there's a big connection here between the matter side of things and the energy side of things. And uh, I sometimes like to think of these as the two sides of reality. Um, I grew up in the New York City metro area. Um, first in uh, kind of the, like Harlem Upper West Side area, Manhattan, and then uh, moved with my mom when my parents separated to Jersey City. And really my childhood was about a process of asking, why are we doing things this way? It was really kind of a shell shock. We have built, you know, 100 story buildings all over this island. Where did that come from? Uh, doesn't really make any sense when you're three or four years old. Uh, grew up in a community where a million cars a day are driven from the suburbs on one side to the city on the other side through a place where most people don't have access to public transit. Why is that going on? Uh, found out, you know, had uh, health issues, respiratory issues all my childhood. Uh, found out several years later, I live a mile away from one of the dirtiest coal plants in the United States, which is also located four miles from downtown Manhattan. It's kind of strange. Um, so to, 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 to make a really long story short, uh, the, the guiding uh, force or question that's guided uh, a whole lot of my life has been, uh, feeling like the way a lot of things work in our society today is pretty silly. And we need to come up with a, a way of doing things that makes a lot more sense. Uh, all of those why questions, those how questions, those, those how is it possible that we do things this way, um, really led me to the energy system. Um, energy is, is what uh, guides how we do all of this stuff with stuff. Um, it's how we make all the stuff. It's how we move all the stuff. It's how we dispose all the stuff. And it, it's, it's in our lives all the time and we don't think about it very much. Um, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm gonna talk about a very, very specific solution uh, that we're working on here in the Twin Cities. And I'll talk about a specific case study um, as well. So, there we go. Uh, I work on community solar. Um, cooperative Energy Features is a member-owned cooperative, um, meaning we're a member-owned business. Uh, and we develop community solar gardens that are providing accessible, clean energy to really anyone with an energy bill. Uh, historically, if you wanted solar, uh, you had to put up the money yourself, put it on your own roof, you had to be a property owner. So all these things that you had to do that you know the vast majority of us don't have. Uh, community solar is a business model uh, that um, was really introduced in Minnesota in 2013. And to make it really simple, uh, the way it works is you have some location, could be a big building, could be a parking lot, could be an open field that is willing to host solar. You have some developer, and a lot of these are private companies, uh, we do this as a co-op, uh, build a large solar array uh, on that site uh, and deliver energy to the electric grid, in our case, XL Energy. Um, we then sign up ordinary people in the community who are subscribers. Uh, you can be a renter, uh, you can have a house that doesn't have good solar access. Anyone with an energy bill can participate. Uh, and Excel, or whatever the utility is, gives a credit on the bill to that subscriber. Um, this is the basic model of what we do. We've also done a number of other energy services over time. Uh, there's lots of companies doing this, but what I've found in the industry is that uh, the most commonplace practice or standard um, is really to replicate the cycle of wealth extraction that has been at the center of our energy relationship for the last 100, 150 years. Uh, where a big outside company is coming in, building a big piece of infrastructure, and then we all have to pay for that infrastructure month by month through our energy bills. Uh, we want to change that relationship around so that the wealth generation of our energy system uh, is going back to the people who are using it. And that's why we worked with a couple of other organizations uh, to form the Just Community Solar Coalition. And uh, these are some of the values that are at the core of this model. So we want to make sure that there's access, regardless of income, regardless of property ownership, all of these types of things. Um, focusing on job creation and particularly addressing the racial disparity in employment here in Minnesota, which is one of the worst in the country. Um, and uh, making sure that we're actually equipping people of color and low-income low income individuals for jobs in the solar industry. Because historically, 
solar industry has been real white. Um, <laughs> And uh, then how do we make sure that this is deepening the relationships in the community and the partnerships uh, that, uh, so that people can actually take control of saying, this is how we want our energy to work? A Couple of other things. Just a really quick example, uh, our first project, which is gonna be under construction in the next couple of months, is on the roof of Shiloh Temple in North Minneapolis. Uh, this is providing power for about 35 households. Uh, the full power needs for 25 years. Uh, we're able to deliver um, a cost of energy per month that is lower than the amount you save on your bill. So it's an immediate savings with no upfront cost. Uh, and we've partnered with a job training program to train local North Minneapolis residents in building this thing. Uh, we're doing a bunch of other projects around the Twin Cities. Um, and we're also in, in uh, coalition with a bunch of organizations that are working on the uh, policy and kind of systems change work needed to get this done. Uh, there is a petition out about that on the action table, and I'm happy to talk with folks uh, about all of this great work and how it connects to the overall transition to a better future.